don't mock. I'm not a fool. And people who know me personally uh, know that I am not a fool. But I won't get into the details of those. I just want people to realize that I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. And welcome. It's Tony here from the Dumb Leaders Podcast. Welcome to episode 66. And so much has changed since our very last podcast. We've just seen this massive change, haven't we? And it's been all brought about by this thing called the COVID-19 virus. Now, our way of life has changed in just about every country, every occupation. We have countries in varying stages or degrees of lockdown or social isolation or, or home <laughs> confinement, as some people are calling it. And everyone seems really committed and focused on stopping the spread of the virus, flattening the curve. But, uh, geez, we're taking a big boot to the economy to do that. So the world has certainly changed and we are going to see a range of health issues that come from this far reaching. Now, already we've seen calls to uh, depression lines from my understanding, from my contacts, has uh, increased in the vicinity of 200 percent. Right. So that's pretty huge. Um, now, obviously, we don't have stats for things like suicides and whatnot, but I would imagine that we are going to face a, a lot of depressed people coming through and getting out of this COVID-19. And just within the um, the communities, we, we're seeing blame, we're seeing hysteria, we see fear, and it's all taking hold in each of our communities. And you would see that once again on your social media feeds. We've got judgment that, that's being passed on people. You know, we've got experts that are coming out, so-called experts, coming out of the woodwork. We see so much false stuff being shared as real, it's just incredibly frightening to believe how fear can take hold and and just change what usually could be a, a rational mindset of a person into something that is far from rational. So one of the things I really do hope that we lose is this judgment, this judgment of people that's taking place. Um, we see fake prophets, we've seen memes, we're seeing the media focus on all the negative aspects. We, we're having it called the deadly virus. And yes, it's killing people, but so do so many other things in our world, as we know it. And once again, I'm not downplaying this thing. But the type of language that we use, you know, and and some of the media hysteria has just created a desire for, that there's a group, there's there's a segment of the um, the population calling for lockdowns, calling for army control. Now, once countries do that, it's very hard to come back from that, you know. So we really need to be mindful in so many ways um, of what we're wishing for. So a total lockdown, stuck at home, my God, that's going to create enough problems as it is. Alcoholism, domestic violence, you name it. So so we really need to be cautious about what it is that we wish for. We've seen evidence of what happens with people when they get stressed or anxious, and we've seen the panic buying happening in supermarkets. So there's so much that we need to take away and and learn from during this virus, but also as we come out of this virus. And this is why I wanted to share on the Dumb Leaders podcast some of the ways that even a dumb leader should be thinking about to get out of this virus. Now, I'm not passing judgment today on any uh, government or any leader within polit uh, politics for navigating their way through the current crisis. They... I bet when they took office, they never ever thought they'd be doing this. So I'm not going to at all pass judgment on some of the things that I've seen. 
But what we do see is that spreading fear and panic has now become the norm. But we've also seen some of that brighter side of engagement. We've seen parties by video. We've seen Italian people being serenaded from uh, from their balconies. We've seen people doing innovative things to continue to deliver services to clients. Now, all of these initiatives, we simply cannot lose, right, when we come out of this. And what I want you to think about is what are some of those things now that maybe you can start thinking about from a business perspective? You know, we've seen concerts from the couch, right? So as a museum, uh, uh, sorry, as a musician, is this uh, something that you could foreseeably do in the future? These are things that we need to be thinking about. We've got the global delivery apps, for example, the Uber Eats of the world that charge like a 30% fee for that um, for that restaurant to be on uh, their platform. Now, some people say that's high, highway robbery. I would say that's fair from, from a marketing and, and a labour perspective. But maybe now, as we... Focus back in on local communities. Maybe there's a way that people can take those platforms, develop their own for their own local area. So I'm just saying these are some of the things that we need to be thinking about, some of the things that we cannot we cannot, and simply cannot move away from. We've come up with new ways of doing business and all of, importantly, all of these things that have potentially stopped people from looking for those new ways have evaporated. The fear of, <clears throat> so for example, the fear of doing videos, for example, for, on, from a lot of video, from a lot of small business people, uh, the fear of getting your brand out there, the, the fear for standing up for who it is that you want, some of those things have simply evaporated because there is a need for us to continue to be doing that. The desire to fly under the radar is another way. If your business, if you're happy for your business to fly under the radar, no one's going to find you in in a digital world. You can't physically network. So you need to be thinking more and more that these are the things that I cannot lose. Because when it comes to basic survival instincts, um, you know, whether it's building, um, getting food on the table, whether it's about um, uh, building an e-commerce, that sort of thing for your business, you cannot go back to normal. If you started doing classes by Zoom, for example, if you're a, a a professional service provider and if you started doing workshops and that by Zoom and you're starting to get some traction, I would say keep that up, maintain that, build on that and let watch that aspect grow. So we've got to embrace the new norm. But I just want to present some thoughts on how as a country, and in this case it's Australia because that's where I live, needs to navigate as we work through this. So this is the stuff that I want leaders to be thinking about and this is the stuff that I'm going to present so simply that even a dumb leader can navigate through. Now the first two comments that I want to make, and this is directed both to ourselves as humans and to the business world, we need to build a more robust way of getting things done, right, or doing things. We need to create real value and understand the concept of value. We, um, the consumerist mentality that so many have had in our world has truly been shook, um, shook up, shaken up by this particular virus. And this is our chance to minimize and reduce it. So our consumerism ways must change or should change. Our desire to own the latest and the greatest at the lowest possible price is something that we can sit back on now, reflect on and realise, you know, in the scheme of things, that's ultimately not really important. So what may have been important has been replaced by the things that are important, our relationships, family relationships, personal relationships. Our relationships are important. The ability for us to be able to go outside, the freedom of movement, (laughs) picnics on the beach, they're the things that we suddenly realise are important. So if we go back to wanting the latest and greatest at the lowest possible price, we're just on the same path again. 
our freedom of movement is one of those things. That freedom for us to be able to get outside, meet up with people, network, um, be a part of a community. So as a <clears throat> as the global outlook gets replaced by a more localized outlook, the inevitable will happen. You know, so and and I'll talk about manufacturing in the business sector that I'm going to share with you in a sec. But ultimately, if we want to start to build up our local communities again and make them bulletproof, we will see price rises. We will start to understand sacrifice more because we are all sacrificing at this stage. Even those ones that are being judged on our social media that they're not sacrificing, they're actually ultimately seeing a sacrifice in some way, shape or form. We have a new understanding of sacrifice and new ways of uh, consumerism must be implemented. To Together, we can build a stronger way, a better way, and maybe just, maybe just help us get over the our human impact on the, our planet. Who knows? Who knows? This may be the very catalyst that we needed to come together more globally, to focus locally and create a life that's better. Our mindset around value needs to shift. Our expectation that the government will provide us, no matter where which government you're in, will provide us free money for us to maintain our standard of living. Now, if my parents were anything like yours, they were always on to me about building my nest egg for a rainy day. Well, guess what? This is our rainy day. Shit happens, and most of it, is out of our control. But the way that we prepare for it is within our control. Now, if you're expecting the government, wherever you are, to give you a truckload of free money, I want you to think about that. Because ultimately, there will be a cost. Ultimately, there will be a cost. Now, from a business perspective, a couple of things certainly need to change. I speak with businesses all about, all the time, about having all their eggs in the one basket. And what I mean by that is the risk that they face by having one major customer, one major supplier, because that risk is huge and it's real. Your business is tied to the very success of that one major customer, that one major supplier. If they fail, you fail. <clears throat> That's the harsh reality of that sort of thing. But it's exactly what we have with China. The vast majority of our manufacturing comes in from China. Now, there's a common saying, when China sneezes, the world catches a cold. When China sneezes, the world catches a cold. Just think about that one. The manufacturing base here in Australia has been eroded away by free trade thought um, higher than third world country wages and a lack of investment, support and will um, that's provided to the innovative minds that we have in this country that can make a difference in this area. People are now banging on about buying Australian, right? They're banging on even more about buying Australia, Australian. But the reality is we don't have a choice of Australian-made products. But we also don't want to pay the higher price that's associated with Australian-made products. That's our mindset shift as a consumer. That's our sacrifice. That's that minimising consumerism because that's what's going to happen. Don't just make a blatant statement saying we need to buy Australian. Of course we do. I agree with that. But we don't have a choice. We'd be hard-pressed in some categories. You can't buy an Australian-made car. We'd be hard-pressed to get a TV that's Australian. So let's get real. We've got to build the manufacturing base. We simply have to build it. Let's look after our own. But as I said, this is our personal mindset that's got to shift as well. We cannot be dependent on another country to maintain our standard of living. We have to create our own value. 
right? And even a dumb leader should be able to understand that. Our method of building businesses now also places us in a predicament. So, because once again, I'm going to use the analogy of rainy day funds. Um, we build businesses differently nowadays. We build businesses to be fast growth. We build them to be running at a loss for many years to build that fast growth. But we disrupt and we kill off industries. Uh, we, we use investor funding. We use government funding. We use all of these things. We leverage to the hilt using other people's money. And we're never putting aside for a rainy day. Businesses need to be socially aware of the impact that I have, that they have. Now, I'm really critical of organisations, and the one I'll use is the NRL here in Australia that is looking for government funding um, to prop up what can only be called their inept business practices. We need to demand better governance of businesses, and the concept of a rainy day fund can only happen if companies are profitable. So businesses and companies need to be profitable to be putting money aside for the rainy day. and But that's what we need to be doing. The other thing that a dumb leader needs to be under, uh, understanding about is foreign ownership is going to be a thing that will rear its head. We cannot allow our companies to be easy pickings for overseas interests. We've got to stem the flow of, of foreign ownership, especially now. As we navigate, we must protect Aussie assets. Now, everyone is in that game because everyone has superannuation funds that are tied to our share market. So everyone's in that game. But shareholder value um, is one thing. Protecting our Aussie assets is the other thing. Now, from a global aspect, so now I'm going to talk globally now, <clears throat> and this is directed at China. Now, We've got to do something about these food markets, these wild food markets. Now, I get really concerned that activists, you know, whether they're animal rights, whether they're climate change, they never focus on the practices we see in China. We see people locking themselves to the gates of a local grazier here in central Queensland, but we never hear about them standing up for the barbaric nature of what these live wild markets, food markets are. They're barbaric. To have a live animal slaughtered in front of you, barbaric. We've got to do better than that world. The world has to do better than that. Will we have the fortitude and the will to stop that practice? Personally, I think it's a must. So there you have it. Even a dumb leader can take that advice and do something with it. We've got to come out of this more agile, leaner and stronger than what we were before. Now the question I ask is, are we willing enough to do that? Now while this advice relates directly to what I'm seeing here in Australia, it's relevant no matter where you are. Please share. Let's get through this. Let's get those messages out there. This is what we need to see coming out of this. We need to see more focus on bulletproofing our country. That, that's what this is all about, bulletproofing our country. So that if something like this happens again in the future, We've got the capacity from a manufacturing base. We've got a capacity of good old strong Aussie assets. And we've got people saving for a rainy day that enables us to get through that. I'll see you next time. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. And people who know me personally uh, know that I'm not a fool. But I won't get into the details of those. I just want people to realize that I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool. Don't mock. I'm not a fool.